Good morning, church. It's good to see you all. You guys are looking wonderful this morning. Wow. Beloved, let's just go to God in prayer as we bow down our head. To you, O oh Lord, be the glory forever. Thank you for another wonderful time for us to hear you speak to us for us to hear you talk to us we believe because we know that you are in your world and your world is made available to us even now we want to thank you father for giving us your word thank you for choosing a mortal to bring your holy word to the heart of men. I pray, Lord God, that you will help us to understand what the Spirit is saying and also put to practice that we may live for you. Take us to look control and touch every heart through your word today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Beloved, once again, it's good to see you all. And I want to really thank God for this day. And I thank God for our pastor, the board of this wonderful commission, for giving me this opportunity to bring the word of God to you all today. Amen. Before we go on, I would like us to see what the scripture is saying to the church. We're taking our reading today from the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, from verse 8. The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the bond offering. The bond offering is to remain on the altar. Altar her throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his lining clothes with lining undergarments next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he is to take off these clothes and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood to 13. And arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Hallelujah. Beloved, that is the word of God. The Lord was there talking to the priests, which also you are one today then I can say the Lord is talking to us. In Leviticus, as we read, we see that God expressly commanded the priests under the old covenant to keep the fire burning on his altar perpetually. He sent the fire. Of course, he himself sent the fire. But he commanded the priests to sustain the fire 
on the altar, the fire that he sent. God gave the priests specific instructions to follow so that they could keep the fire burning on the altar. You know, sometimes we say this chapter or this particular scripture is talking to someone else. Most of, time, most of the time we read the Bible as if it's not talking to us. Or even when the ministers are ministering, we thought, oh, especially when we have a husband and wife that has some argument at home. And then they come to church and maybe somewhere the priests will start talking about something that has to do with the other person's case. He say, yes, pastor, preach on. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to say here is, you are the priest of God. And the Bible said so. Hallelujah. He said you are a chosen generation, right? A royal. A royal. Are you a priest of God? Yes, you are. Beloved, this divine instructions are still very relevant and useful to us today as believers to sustain God's fire in our soul. Like the priest of old, it is our responsibility as the believers today to keep the fire of God's love burning and glowing in our hearts and souls in this evil world. Of course, every one of us know what is happening in our day. We are really in the evil world. What we don't want to see happening is what is happening. What we don't like is what we see. My dear brothers and my sisters, when we look at the book of Exodus chapter 29, verse 38 to 42, therein God instructed priests. Remember, when I talk about priests, you are inclusive. To ensure that there is always a sacrifice on the altar. As long as there is a sacrifice on the altar, the fire will keep what? Burning. But when the sacrifice leaves the altar, the fire also leaves the altar. The priests, which you are one, were commanded to leave the burnt offering on the altar all night until morning and then continue to a succession of uh, uh, offering in the morning until night, according to Leviticus chapter 6, verse 9. Beloved, I'm here to talk to somebody this morning. Like the priests of old, we shall not fail to keep God's love burning and glowing in our souls if we continually present, hear it, or offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. This is very important. Are you in any way hearing yourself as a living sacrifice? In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, that is Apostle Paul speaking to us, he said, to present our bodies as a, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, he continued, do not present your member as instrument of unrighteousness to sin. Rather, present yourself to God as a living sacrifice. As a being, as being alive from dead and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. Beloved, how do we go about this? It takes a constant or a 
I can say a continual submission to the Holy Spirit to keep God's fire burning in our souls. This is why Apostle Paul admonished Timothy saying, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. I still see people calling, Holy Spirit, come down, come and come, come, come. I want to tell us, beloved, we have the Holy Spirit. It is just your duty to do what? To put him to work. Hallelujah. You have the Holy Spirit. Every day we go about running to miracle. Uh, 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 or I call some people miracle mongers. Looking for miracle. Looking for healing. Looking for deliverance. And so on and so on. But... We have forgotten that what that same fellow received is just exactly what you received the day you said, I belong to Jesus. And I do believe that you can even do better than that fellow. What is the essence of going from here and there seeking for help when we can help? The world is waiting for you. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when the Bible talked to us about the igniting, the fire, waking up the giant inside of you, it is for our good. It is also for your good. And it is wisdom to heed this admonition today. The fire of God's love ignited in your heart by the Holy Spirit at the new birth will win as you continually yield yourself to the flesh to gratify its lost desires and passions. When you allow your trouble, your problem, your circumstances or what you see with your optical eyes to continue to dictate for you, my dear, you will be dying. In as much as you are not increasing, you are decreasing. Don't allow these things that we see every day to take the shine away from you. Everybody is going through the same thing in different ways. You have your problem. I have my problem. Even our pastor here, if he should stand here to tell you his own problem, you will pick up your bag and go. We all have problems. But most often, we put our problems behind to face and to talk to you. Brothers and sisters, do not allow these things that people talk about. People cherish the worldly people. Cherish also to carry you away. There are many things that have killed many people today. We are not of this world. Don't be attached with the things of this world. We don't belong here. We are just here for a little time. So don't allow these things to trouble you. Like I said before, if you allow what you see now, your problem, your challenges, your trouble, your situation, to dictate the direction of your prayer, you will never pray well. Because you will not see a place to appreciate God for what he has done for you. And what has he done for you? The salvation of your soul is very important. The hope of a better tomorrow. Not just today. These three things will come and go. But there is something that we don't see with our optical eye that will last forever. The Bible says those things you see now, they are temporal. But the things you don't see, they are real. The real thing does surface the same way the other things surface. So I want you to understand this truth, beloved. The fire of God's love ignited in your heart by the Holy Spirit and the new birth will wane as you continue to yield yourself to the flesh. 
This is why Apostle Paul wants us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, not to love the world and its lusts. Don't be attached. We always hear the song, but this world is not my home. I'm just in passing through. The treasures are let off somewhere beyond the blue. The angels back on me from heaven to pundum. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Don't feel at home in this world, my dear ones. Hmm? Time is very short. It takes working in the spirit to sustain, to keep, to save, or guard the fire of God's love in your heart and soul. Walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. I said walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Let the spirit speak. Till the flesh. In line with God's command in the book of Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. Adding the wood to the fire on the altar increases and strengthens the fire. Solomon testifies in Proverbs 26, 20 to 21. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no tell bearer, Strive ceases, as charcoal is to burn coal, and wood to fire. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. We are now in the winter, right? And we want to be warm, right? Sometimes we put on our firewood, charcoal, you know, to make the fire burn. More, 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 more. Even sometimes like this, guys, we want to increase it. But this is not exactly what the Bible is talking. We're not talking about going to the jungle there to get some firewood to, you know, to burn the fire. We're not talking about going to the shop there to buy firewood. I mean, the, the charcoals in order to burn the fire. Today, burning wood every morning implies spending quality time time every morning in a loving and intimate fellowship or communion with God in prayer and in the word. Spend quality time. Let me tell you something, my dear ones. Spend quality time. I was reading a particular chapter in the book of uh, was it John chapter 8. From verse 31 to 32. Let me be free if you can just help me put John 8, 31 to 32. I want to pick up something there. It's not there. It's not in your system. Hallelujah. All right. Let me see it here. I want to read out. I wanted everybody to read it because what I wanted to explain there is such a thing that I want you to follow me. Now, let me read it out from here. Jesus then said to those Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciple. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Can you see the conditions listed there? You must remain in his word to become his disciple. And only when you become his disciple, you will know the truth. And only when you know the truth, you'll be free from your problem. Hallelujah. So what am I saying today, beloved? The word of God should not be secondary or optional in your life. This word of God and prayer will keep the fire of God's love burning and glowing increasingly in your heart and soul. Treasuring God's word in your heart and focusing on God's love for you will ignite and inflame your soul for God. Beloved, every morning you turn to meditate in God's word. You are adding word, wood to the fire 
in your soul. Every time you pick up this word of God and you do what? You study. So many people read the Bible like eh, a novel, right? Blah, 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 is done. But let us not forget to what Joshua told us in Joshua 1. So this word must not depart out of your mouth. That you must meditate on it, what? Day and night. That you may observe to do. It's only when you meditate on it day and night you can be able to do what it says. And only when you do what it says, you will be, make your way prosperous and you become successful. In order for you to be successful or to be called a successful child of God, the word of God must be your priority. Beloved, what am I saying this morning? Every act of prayer, full meditation, every act of prayer, full meditation on God's love and word is simply adding wood to God's fire in your heart and soul. If you come to know that God loves you and you begin to walk in that consciousness, you will see Christ. Many people don't even know or believe that God still loves them. Especially when things are not going the way they expect it. But any day you come to know the love of God for you, that is the beginning of your new life. The psalmist says, my heart was hot within me while I was amused, while I was musing. The fire burned, then I spoke with my tongue, Psalm 39, 8. Therefore, I want to encourage every one of us in this house today to spend quality time every day to meditate in God's word and love. God's word and God's love for you. Meditate not just on God's word, but God's love. Let it down on you that God loves me. Hallelujah. I want to say to you today, I know you are going through one thing or the other. As a result of this, you have lost the fire. You prayed. And it seems the prayer is no longer effective, no longer working. As a result, you are losing it. I want to encourage you, don't lose it. It's time to buckle up again. It's time to come back. You see, in my place, they said, if you take fish away from the water, the fish dies. If you in any way give up on the things of God, your next name will become obituary. Don't throw off the towel. Don't think that God is not seeing you. Don't think that God is not hearing you. Don't believe the lies of the devil. It is time to wake up from wherever you have fallen. It's time to pick up your Bible again and dust it. It's time to go on your feet again. No matter how strong, how hard, how big the problem. If the problem is bigger than this house, pray above this house. If the problem is bigger than South Africa, include Nigeria in your prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, have you lost God's fire in your hearts or soul, thereby becoming spiritually lukewarm? You can get God's fire back today by simply turning to the Lord Jesus in humility, in repentance, and faith. Jesus said to the church in Ephesus when they lost their first love for him. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from his place unless you repent. The worst thing that can happen to a man is to lose it all. The worst thing that can happen to you is when the hand of God is out of your life. 
before it will be too late, I call you back to order. You turn back. Think about the first love. Remember that day you were so excited about what the Lord has done for you. Remember also the testimonies you gave before. You know, we easily forget that a few days back, a few years back, we stood at the pulpit, we testify. I always say to my people there, when they have money, you will see somebody pick up their money. Praise the Lord. But after some time, when things are not going the way they expected, they will even deny that they have ever received anything from God. Think about the first. Think about yesterday. And move on again. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. Arise. To begin to spend quality time. Daily in a deep or intimate fellowship with God. In prayer and in the word. When you begin to focus on God. And begin to meditate deeply and constantly in God's love and word. Your soul will be filled again. Your soul will be overwhelmed. And even your soul will be submerged in God's love. This is the major way to rekindle, to ignite, and sustain God's fire or love in your soul. Apostle Paul stated here, For to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritual-minded is life and peace. Are you looking up to see the peace of God? Do you want to live again? Be spiritually minded. Do you want to see the hand of God in your life? Put the things of the flesh out. Don't be carried away. Be spiritual minded. An application. If you are here this morning, and you thought it is over. And you believed the lie of the devil that says it is over. Something is telling you it won't work. Something tells you that you can't get there. I am here to challenge you today. Keep your mind. As well, keep your mindset. All these things are all problem of mind. Keep your mindset fixated or focused on God and you will never again become spiritually lukewarm. You will never be cold any longer. You will never die again. Hallelujah. Child of God. Yes, you are still a child of God. We are still the children of God. We be it rain, sun, whether it's bad, whether it's worst, whether it's good, we all are still the children of God. So, child of God, I don't know where you have fallen. I don't know where you are now in your spiritual work with God. I don't know where you are now, but I'm here to tell you, rise up from your carnality. Today, not tomorrow. There is a song that we say, Come to Jesus now. Come and do not delay. Don't say tomorrow. For tomorrow may be too late. Come to Jesus now. Rise up from carnality today. And be ye spiritually minded. Dust yourself. Dust yourself. It doesn't matter. I know. Just clean yourself. Trust yourself of every worldly lust. All these things. They come and they go. Beautiful house. Beautiful building. Beautiful this. I am weak. I am this. This, that, that. They come and go. Trust yourself from worldly lust. Take another step forward by walking in the spirit to do what to sustain to keep safe or guard the fire of god's love in your heart and in your soul 
I want to promise you, the fire is not yet off. It is not yet over. There is still something in you that can shine the world. Rise up and take advantage of it. The Holy Spirit is given to you to help you. And he's still at work, waiting for you to call him to work. May God bless us as we do this in Jesus' name.